possibility to have the Mass in honor of St. Joseph. Today, in Carmel, it is important to be devoted to St. Joseph and uh, ask him especially to improve your interior life. Uh, the school of St. Therese of uh, Lisieux to understand with much better the little way of St. Therese. Especially during this retreat. We continue the study of uh, the contemplative life of Saint Therese and the third part is the transforming union and purification of love, what we will see today, this morning, this afternoon, we'll speak, and tomorrow morning, we'll speak about the zeal, the zeal of Saint Therese, the school of Saint Elia, zelo zelatus sum, dio exercitum, So, the transforming union and the purification of love. It is the last step in the spiritual life. And it is described by Saint Therese of Avila in the seventh mansion. Saint Therese of Lisieux nearly always speaks about of a prayer during the nov novitiate as being dry and obscure. Uh, however, before death, she acknowledged that she had experienced several transports of love at this time during the novitiate. The one in particular when she was for a whole week far removed from this world. I cannot describe it for it seemed as though I were acting with a body not my own. There was as it were a veil thrown over all earthly things. There is no contradiction with the dryness of purity of her uh, prayer. Saint John of the Cross explains this fact when speaking of spiritual visions of created things. Uh, 
that it be true that the recollection of them excites the soul to a certain love of God and to contemplation. Yet pure faith and detachment in darkness excites it much more without the soul's knowing how or whence it comes. And so it will sometimes happen that the soul is set, for, on, is set on fire with the urgings of the purest love of God without knowing whence they come or on what foundation they rest. In short, as faith is rooted more and more into the soul by means of this emptiness and darkness, in detachment from all things, in poverty of spirit, these are different expressions of one and the same thing, so also the charity of God is simultaneously the more deeply rooted in the soul. And therefore, the more the soul strives to become blind and annihilated as to all interior and exterior things, the more it will be filled with faith and consequently with love and hope. But this love at times is neither comprehended nor felt because it does not establish itself in the senses with tenderness, but in the soul with fortitude, with greater courage and resolution than before. It is in the Ascent of Mount Carmel, Book 2, Chapter 24. Sometimes in the uh, edition of uh, St. John of the Cross, it's not always the same chapter, but one different, or 25, uh, it can be... So be not surprised if you take the reference, don't find immediately, you take one chapter before or after, you will find. St. John of the Cross develops his teaching still more explicitly in the living flame of love and proves that in the supernatural order it is possible to love without distinct knowledge. And this happens with, with St. Teresa. Uh, it is in the stanza, the third stanza of the living flame. Take care, therefore, to empty the will and detach it from all its inclinations, for it is not going backwards, searching after sweetness and comfort, even though it have known in God, distinctly felt, it is really advancing upwards above all such things of, to God, seeing that it is without any particular pleasure, and though the penitent have no particular comfort in God, distinctly apprehended, though he does not make distinct acts of love, he does find more comfort in him in the general secret and dim infusion than if he were under the influence of distinct acts of knowledge because the soul sees clearly then that no one of them can furnish so much comfort and delight as this calm and lonely infusion. At one time, the industry, further, he says, at one time, the understanding is more filled with knowledge than the will with love. At another, and at another, love is deeper than knowledge. This was the case with little Teresa. It was given her to penetrate the mysterious depths of love. And uh, can uh, try to follow her into this, those depths. Uh, I will mention here the, uh, 
uh, act as a merciful, uh, they're referring to the merciful love. two years before her death, and the mystical grace which followed it. Mother Saint Teresa in a unita, uni, unitive life. You know this act, the offering to the merciful love, find in the, in the story of a soul and maybe in some books of prayer it's a perfect prayer which we can meditate on this act The formula of our offering should be noted attentively. <coughs> to live by love, she offered herself as a victim to love. To make her life an act of unceasing love, she asked to be continually consumed. By being thus passive, the soul attends its highest degree of activity. She counted on this passive martyrdom to lo of love to prepare her to appear in God's presence and to take her flight without delay into eternal embrace of beatific vision, beatific love. <coughs> in the formula of this offering, Saint Teresa shows a very deep understanding of the mystical state and a great experience of passive contemplation. Uh, and the, the grace which followed uh, this act of offering was obtained during uh, the station of the cross. She was in the choir and she felt uh, suddenly wounded by a dart of fire so ardent that she thought she should die. She could not uh, explain this transport. She said there is no comparison to describe the intensity of that flame. It seemed as though an invisible force plunged me wholly into fire. But what fire? What sweetness? One second more, and my soul must have been set free. And thus I found myself again on earth, and dryness at once returned to my heart. Saint Teresa in her life, in chapter 24, speaks about the wound of love. Saint John of the Cross, so in living flame, first stanza. There is not an exterior sign of this phenomena. <coughs> like for Saint Teresa of Avila, the, the dart and the Penetrating her heart, mm. uh, the transfixion. Uh, we celebrate this feast of Saint Teresa of Avila on 27th of uh, August. In Saint Teresa of Lisieux, it is uh, spiritual. It is uh, there is no sign exterior, but she she got this grace, special grace. And uh, it is in her life, in her whole life, she wanted to have a life that everyone could imitate. And God wanted that, the little way. 
It is a normal development of sanctifying grace without anything extraordinary. Our life after this grace leaves no doubt at, as to its nature and sublimity. But it is normal way for everyone. But she went to the um, highest <coughs> degree of life in sanctifying grace and uh, she saw that uh, such a degree of uh, holiness can't be reached by anyone <coughs> on earth who wants to renounce himself to, and who will be faithful to every grace given by God. But uh, as says uh, Father Gabriel de Sainte Marie Madeleine, it is a, a, a book in French, Le Message de la Petite Thérèse, written in 1924, and he speaks about the connection with um, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Thérèse of, of Lisieux, uh, how she, she was at the school of Saint John of the Cross. So, Few souls arrive at union, the divine union. It's not the fault of God, who once would like that all reach this union, but it is the fault of the soul who refuses to suffer. They refuse the suffering, the penance, renounce themselves. To suffer is absolutely necessary for the one who wants to uh, reach the summit of perfection. Union with God, uh, for union with God it is necessary to have a complete purification, perfect detachment of all creatures to empty our soul. As uh, Saint John the Cross uh, said in the uh, dark night, so Saint Therese of Avila is the one who understood that, and she saw that it is possible to reach this union with God. Without extraordinary graces, only being faithful to each grace God wants to give us. And when we are faithful to this grace, of grace uh, to renounce ourselves, to uh, God helps us to for this renunciation, daily renunciation, and uh, He gives other grace, and and uh, we. Then we advance from virtue to virtue, as uh, he said in the life of a saint, I think, Saint André Abelin. In uh, the book of the Story of a Soul, page 180, 181, it is an uh, eight chapter. It's about, um, we start at the end, so page 180. Oh my God, is your disdain the love going to remain closed up within your heart? It seems to me that if you were to find a soul suffering themselves as victims of Holocaust to your love, you would consume them rapidly. It seems to me, too, that you would be happy not to hold back the waves of infinite tenderness within you if your justice loves to release itself. This justice 
which extends only over the earth. How much more does your merciful love desire to set souls on fire, since your mercy reaches to the heavens? O oh my Jesus, let me be this happy victim. Consume your holocaust with the fire of your divine love. Dear Mother, you know the love arises the oceans of Greece which flooded my soul immediately after I made that act of oblation. From that day I have been penetrated and surrounded with love. Every moment this merciful love renews and purifies me, leaving in my soul no trace of sin. I cannot fear purgatory. I know I do not merit to enter even into that place of expiation with the holy souls. But I also know that the fire of love is more sanctifying than the fire of purgatory. I know that Jesus could not wish useless suffering for us and he would not inspire me with the desires I feel were he not willing to fulfill them. With the booklet uh, Saint Teresa of and the Purgatory, uh, maybe you know it is translated in English, and uh, what she said about, about Purgatory. She did not work to avoid purgatory. She thought simply she she loved and she sanctified herself and she was faithful to God's love for her and she avoided purgatory by that way. She offered all the satisfaction for the souls, for the conversion, not for her. But God thought of her and purified her while she was on earth. So she was ready to see God immediately after her life. She did not calculate, and it is a good, good uh, sign of uh, the purity of her, uh, of her love. We can recognize here the very essence of transforming union. union. She did not know the terms used by the mystical writers, but uh, writing uh, as a child, she, she exp explained what she, she lived. But, uh, so she had reached the top of the secret ladder spoken by Saint John, spoken of by Saint John of the Cross in the Dark Night of the Soul, Book 2, Chapter 17 to 20. On the ninth step, says Saint John of the Cross, the soul is on fire sweetly. This step is that of the perfect who burn away sweetly in God. For this sweet and delicious burning is the work of the Holy Ghost because of the union of the soul with God. The blessings and the riches of God which the soul shall know and enjoys cannot be described. I shall now say no more on this step, except that it is immediately followed by the tenth and the last, which is, does not belong to this life. The tenth step it is. 
the vision, the possession of God. Chapter 20. What did little Teresa desire? She said, this in the following words in my heart I feel boundless desires and I confidently beseech she to take possession of my soul it is in the art of offering I implore thee to take from me all liberty to sin if through weakness I should chance to fall May a glance from thy eyes, from thy eyes strike away, cleanse my soul and consume all my imperfections, as fire transforms all things into itself. To obtain this purification, this forgiveness immediately uh, after a sin of uh, frailty. Uh, we are after an imperfection to see as Saint Peter saw our Lord uh, and cried. Uh, he was contrite of his sins after having seen our Lord. So, contemplating the face of Jesus. Did uh, Saint Therese uh, obtain the purification of her soul? I desire that Jesus may take possession of my faculties so that my actions may no longer be merely human but divine. Action directed by the spirit of love. And This is mystical union, the reign of the seventh fall gift, the transforming union. And she did not regard this as a special privilege. How can I, you ask me if it be possible to love God as I love me? Dear sister, she said to her sister, do you not understand that, that to love Jesus and to be his victim of love, the more weak and wretched we are, the better material do we make for this consuming and transform, transfiguring love? It is encouraging to hear such words and the more weak and wretched we are the better material do we make for this consuming and transfiguring love we need this disposition uh, basic disposition humility uh, um, confidence in God, as um, Saint Teresa manifested in her life, like a little child who accepts to be um, educated, uh, to to follow, uh, to, to to obey all the solicitations of grace. She continually encouraged Zeus with whom she had intercourse in the holy ambition of going straight to heaven. How could we cleanse in the flames of purgatory souls consumed with the fire of divine love? She wrote to a missionary, How could we cleanse in the flames of purgatory souls consumed with the fire of divine love? There are, course, there are two passages in the epistle about the, the power of charity which cleans from all sin.
perfect act of uh, a perfect contrition is a perfect act of charity. At the same time, because out of love of Jesus, who died for us, who suffered for us, that we are contrite. We are little Teresa's hope, hopes fulfilled. Did she attain this summit of love? We think, uh, yes, she reached this summit of love. She said, if I reach not those hates to which my soul aspires, this very martyrdom, this foolishness will have been sweeter to me than eternal bliss will be. And uh, after an act of offering, our sisters attest that uh, she acquired a remarkable mastery over her actions, especially after this wound of love she got at the uh, station of the cross. All virtues flourished in the fragrant garden of her soul. She herself declared, I have not even had to struggle. I have been able to stay, to say with our Holy Father, St. John of the Cross, my house is entirely at peace. Because she was led by the Holy Ghost completely, her uh, actions were the actions of the Holy Ghost in her, operation of the Holy Ghost in her, and they only are what, what they ought to be, as the St. John of the Cross. Under this influence of the Holy Ghost, the actions, uh, the, the soul knows that they ought to know they remember what they ought to remember, they forget what they ought to forget, they love what they ought to love. They, it is a divine life which is uh, uh, in the soul, uh, with a manifestation of the life of God constantly. It is preparation of the life of heaven where all our action will be uh, uh, conformed to God. Such a soul is uh, very often doing the work of God intend upon him and the things of God without thinking or reflecting on what it is doing for him. We have some examples uh, in the in the life of Saint Therese, when she had to uh, form the novices, uh, these novices say, often, you have an answer for everything. Where do you find all that you teach us? And uh, she said, she said she, she, that she, uh, it was God himself, Jesus himself, who taught her 
what she had to tell these novices. I can read their souls because at times it happens that I discover to them without revelation the subject of their thoughts. The penetration of the mind habitually enlightened by the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It is simply the working of a faculty moved by God in one who has attained transforming union, as St. John of the Cross explains in various passages. The novices betrayed surprise when she read their inmost thoughts. This is my secret, she said to them. I never reprimand to you without first invoking our blessed lady and asking her to inspire me as to what will be most for you good and I am often astonished myself at the things I teach you. At such time I feel that I make no mistake and that is Jesus, Jesus who speaks by my lips. He was uh, she said also in uh, in her life that for some months the divine master has entirely changed his method of cultivating his little flower even where all creatures to draw near to admire and flatter it that would not add a shade of idle satisfaction to the true joy which thrills it on realizing that in God's eyes it is but a poor worthless thing and nothing more. She lived face to the primal truth and she knew she was no sickness. Another consideration of her attitude, uh, she experienced when she was in Rome, she was young at the time, we found train to the Carmel. Uh, that to the pure all things are pure. That a simple and upright soul does not see evil in anything, because evil only exists in impure hearts and not in inanimate objects. To have a good eye on everything is important in our, in our life, uh, not a bad eye of uh, the faults of others, and uh, to see, to be positive it is important. Saint Francis de Sales had such an attitude to, about charity and so. Uh, the good words about the importance of the virtue of charity. We are so inclined to see what is bad, what is uh, has to be criticized, what is uh, and uh, 
and to have a, a good opinion of others because we cannot know the intention in the soul. God only penetrates the soul. She was experiencing it uh, when she wrote, since she was able to speak with uh, such knowledge, and is recall, this recalls what St. John of the Cross says of souls who have attained to the spiritual knowledge. And again, we have this expression, I am like one risen from the dead. But the most authentic sign of her transformation was the perfect, in the perfect union of her will with that of her beloved. <coughs> I love all that he does, she said. I love all that he does. She was absolutely indifferent to both life and death. I have no longer any desire save to love him till I die. I fear nothing now. And uh, the desire to to die of love, like all her uh, other desires, was to be granted. She had a final trial before her death to prepare for such a death. And it is a martyrdom of death, of faith also. The martyrdom of faith. She was enveloped in a darker and longer spiritual night. during the 18 months before her death. She describes this in chapter 9 of her life. He allowed my soul to be overwhelmed with darkness and the thought of heaven. Now became a source of conflict and torture. I have been suffering four months. The mists the mist about me have penetrated me, my very soul and have enveloped me so completely that I cannot even picture to myself this promised country. I try to live by faith that it does not afford me the least consolation. I have made more acts of faith during the last years, the last years and during all the rest of my life. Sometimes the enemy uh, was there to tempt her and she, she tried to, did the best to to turn back, to avoid in. I know that a duel is an act of cowardice and so without once looking him in the face I turn my back on the foe, then I hasten to my Saviour and vow that I am ready to shed my blood in witness of my belief in heaven. I tell him, if only we will we'll deign to open it to poor unbelievers, I am content to sacrifice all pleasure in the thought of it as long as I, lie, I live. For what joy can be greater than to suffer for thy love? The more the suffering is and the less it appears before men, the more is it to thy honor and glory. <coughs> it is not a veil, it is a wall which rises 
to the very heavens and shuts out the starry sky. When I think of the happiness of heaven and the eternal possession of God, I do not feel any joy therein, for I see only what I want to wish to believe. It was in pure darkness in faith. It was the most painful suffering she could have at the end of her life. I sing only what I wish to believe. Sometimes I confess a little ray of sunshine illumines my dark night, and I enjoy peace for an instant. But later, the remembrance of this ray of light, instead of consoling me, makes the blackness thicker still. And yet never have I felt so deeply how sweet and merciful is the Lord. He did not send me this heavy cross when it might have discouraged me, but at the time when I was able to be it. I think of Saint Paul who said, uh, God will not give, allow temptation over your strength. He will give you the grace to sustain it. Now it simply takes from me all natural satisfaction I might feel in my longing for heaven. Now this trial has a, a purifying effect. It had taken away all natural satisfaction. This uh, trial belonged to the unity of life and uh, it was a consequence of transforming love the Carmelite contemplative was suffering that she might enter into the heart of the thicket it is the expression of uh, Saint John of the Cross in the the Mount of Carmel has sent. To enter into the heart of the secret of the divine wisdom and the superimanent knowledge of Christ, she suffered because she was transformed into Jesus crucified, and with him and in him was redeeming her brethren. There is a difference of the sufferings in the state of the spiritual esposal and the spiritual marriage is different. The step before and the now at the end. In the spiritual esposal, Darkness alternates, alternates with light, sorrow with joy. In the perfect, the extremes of anguish and bliss harmonize continually in the heights of a peace which surpassed all understanding. And she was at this stage, at the end, the last months. The so, but the nearer the end of her life, the sweeter became the harmony. Oh my God, says Saint Therese, how good the heart to the little victim of thy merciful love. Now, even when thou joinest these bodily pains to those of my soul, I cannot bring myself to say, the anguish of death had encompassed me. I rather cry out 
in my gratitude, I have gone down into the valley of the shadow of death, but I fear no evil because the O Lord art in me. It is a Psalm 22. I suffer much, very much, and yet my state is one of profound peace. All my longings have been realized. I am full of confidence. Oh, how good God is. Truly, he must be very good to give me the grace to bear all I have to suffer. But the tide of suffering rose higher and higher. She was suffering for souls. Love had made the little victim of merciful love to share in the son's work of redemption. She had to suffer for a soul, for her unbelieving brethren, to obtain the light of faith for those who did not believe, who lost the faith. The death of love which I do, I so much desire, is that of Jesus on the cross. She will have the same death she desired. She wished to reproduce the suffering face of Jesus and justify her second title of nobility, Teresa of the Holy Face. <coughs> and the end, at the end of the life, it is the last word she said when uh, the last day, especially, if I suffer much and show no sign of happiness at the end, don't be troubled, dear Mother, she said to Mother Agnes. Did not our Lord himself die a victim of love? And see how great was his agony. On the morning of her last day, speaking of her last night on earth, she said, it has been pure agony, without a ray of consolation. At half past two, she sat up in bed and exclaimed, the chalice is full to overflowing. I would, could never have believed that it was possible to suffer so intensely. I can only explain it by ext my extreme desire to save souls. And after, a little while after, Yes, all that I have written about my thirst for suffering is really true. I do not regret having surrendered my, myself to love. A few minutes after seven, turning to the prioress, she asked, Mother, is it not the agony? I am Am I not going to die? Yes, my child, it is agony, but Jesus perhaps wills that it be plunged for some hours. Ah, very well then, very well. I do not wish to suffer less than looking at the crucif a crucifix. Oh, I love him, my God, I love thee. And she died. She opened her eyes, shining with the peace of heaven and an unutterable joy, and fixed them above a statue of Our Lady. The ecstasy of faith lasted the space of a credo and ended in vision. A few months before, her death in July 97, she had said, All that I do, little souls must be able to do likewise. And uh, what is to reach uh, 
this summit of uh, mystical life is, is possible. The Pope who canonized uh, Saint Teresa of Avila, beatified, gave this uh, this little way to all the souls we speak about the mission of Saint Teresa of Avila the last day but uh, already we can have an interest about this little way if uh, if this way was uh, wrong she said uh, I will come and tell you but uh, she came back and said, my way is sure. And she continues to teach the soul and to help the soul who pray to her and who wants to follow this uh, little way. It is uh, the, the teaching of the Church about uh, grace, sanctifying grace, which is uh, simply the, the right uh, way of sanctification for all of us without extraordinary manifestations. The great example of Saint Teresa Shaw as better than any many learned dissertations how in this normal development of sanctifying grace we must distinguish the essential from the accidental. It seems to have been a special mission to effect both in theory and practice a divesting, a separation, leaving on <coughs> one side all that is accessory that the essential alone may, might remain and be manifested. for uh, your mental prayer about what I have said and with the act of the merciful love of Saint Teresa and uh, uh, take a part of this uh, beautiful prayer of offering and try to assimilate this thought of Saint Teresa in order to live uh, more in conformity with uh, with, uh, with uh, what God wants us from us uh, to love Him, to be confident in Him, in His powerful, uh, in the in the power of His grace to. Transform to change us progressively. I live not myself, but God lives in me. This should be uh, the, the desire of each of us, and uh, it will be at the end in heaven the life of a very saint, a very soul beatified in in God. So. Let us ask uh, Saint Teresa to, to lead us, our teacher, to uh, show the way and to help us also by the grace. Uh, she will ask for us in order to improve in our spiritual life.
Tens of thousands of sons are in those time. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among the land of blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Saint Joseph, Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus, in the name of thousands of sons, Holy Ghost. Here I put some titles, if you can find, it can be interesting about spiritual life. Uh, Living in God, the uh, Father Robert de Langeac, the uh, Carmelite. He, he's not a Carmelite, but he, he has the spirituality of a Carmelite. It's a uh, short uh, thought about uh, spiritual life. It is how to love God as Saint Therese of loved him by Father Martin. It's an old book. It's a modern shop, you can find this book. And uh, Saint of Lisieux, by those who knew her, uh, it is at the uh, process of canonization, those who gave the uh, witness of, of her life, the sister of the convent. So, some books I can uh, look. Uh, 